fuck yes. That's right. Welcome to the best game ever made. This is Deus Ex, and specifically we're playing the revision version of the game. So, what revision is, is kind of an overhaul mod. I actually really like it. It has divided the Deus Ex community somewhat. Some people don't like it, they think it changes too much about it. I think it actually refreshes the game where it needs to be refreshed. Deus Ex is getting up there in age, and it hasn't exactly aged well in certain respects, and I think Revision fixes those things while leaving the core gameplay intact. I'm going to be playing Revision, because I really like it. It kind of imagines what this game would have looked like had they had another year and a half of development. So, I said that this was my favorite game, so I want to do something a little bit special. Um, something that I normally wouldn't do, and that's, I'm going to try to do this with 100% story completion. What I mean by that is like, almost like a lore through. I'm gonna be reading every book, every bulletin, every email, talking to every character, um, reading every item description, doing everything I can to gain every little bit and piece of story and the entire game and all of its campy, hammy goodness. And if that sounds a little bit too slow and boring for you, this may not be the playthrough for you because this is gonna be super fun for me specifically, but hey, if you haven't seen this game before, you're in for a treat. This is fucking awesome. And if you haven't, maybe you'll see something new. Because this every time I play this game, I discover new shit. So that kind of inspired me to see if I can truly uncover everything this game has to offer. Um, back to revision, what this also does is it kind of rebalances the game. There were certain skills, certain augmentations were deemed that were deemed kind of useless throughout the years. This game tries to combine combine the skills and augmentations in a way that makes more sense. Um, it, it definitely changes a few things. Um, you might see those things, but otherwise I, it's the same fucking game. I'm also going to be playing more or less non-lethally. I'm not going to be killing anyone directly with weapons. I'm only going to be carrying a prod and a police baton. However, if there are indirect ways of killing, like maybe filling a gas or filling a room full of gas or you know, hacking a turret or something, I might do that. Depends on how it works in the, in the situation. But otherwise, that's it. So I think we're good to start. Let's hop into training, because it is tie tied to the lore. So here we go. UNATCO Training Facilities, Continental United States. I'm so fucking excited. Oh my god. Woo! Here we go. I figured you'd be sick of drills by now. Hopefully our training exercises will be more interesting than what they've had you doing at the academy. Jaime Reyes. Uh, we'll learn more about him in a bit. He's our buddy. Open the door by clicking the right mouse button. The right button uses items in the world. That's right. Easy enough. The key on the desk opens encryption-based nanotech locks. When you pick it up, it will automatically be added to your key ring. Use the key ring to unlock the door and proceed to the next area. I'm going to see if... Settings. Select it, motherfucker. Sound. I spill my drink! Let's lower... Music volume a bit. Speech volume is at max. Okay. We'll go for that. We'll see how that works. So that's Jaime Reyes right there. That's someone we don't know. But he will become very important later, so... Can I hop up here? Oh, it just kicks me off. Keep him in your mind. Just, just take that face. Got our nano key. Oh, I guess there probably would be a, a good time to uh, check out our inventory here. We have nothing, but we have 500 credits. And so health in this game is interesting. You don't just have your straight normal pool of HP and then you're dead. You have each body part has its own health. The only way you actually die in this game is if your head and torso reach 0% because 
Your arms and legs have different effects if they hit zero. We can read what those are. Obviously, damage to the arm is of concern in any combat situation as it has a direct effect on the agent's ability to utilize a variety of weapons. Losing the use of one arm will certainly lower the agent's combat efficiency, while the loss of both arms will render it nearly impossible for an agent to present an even nominal threat to most hostiles. Light wounds will give you slightly decreased accuracy, medium will be moderately, and major wounds will be significantly decreased accuracy. The description is the same for the left arm. For the legs, Click on it, you motherfucker. Injuries to the leg will result in drastically diminished mobility. If an agent in hostile territory is fortunate enough to lose the use of both legs but still remain otherwise viable, they are ordered uh, They are ordered to execute UNATCO's Special Operations Order 99009 Self-Termination. <laughs> Light wounds is slightly impaired movement, medium wounds is moderately, and heavy is significantly. Head. Head wounds are fatal in the vast majority of threat scenarios. However, in those cases where death is not instantaneous, agents will often find that head injuries impair vision and aim. Care should be taken to heal such injuries as quickly as possible or death may result. Slight wounds is slightly decreased accuracy, medium wounds is wavering vision, and heavy wounds is death. Torso. The torso is by far the portion of the human anatomy able to absorb the most damage, but it is also the easiest to target in close quarters combat. As progressively more damage is inflicted to the torso, agents may find their movements impaired and eventually bleed to death, even if a mortal blow to a vital organ is not suffered. Sli uh, light wounds is slightly impaired movement, medium is significantly, and major wounds is death. So there you go, that's how health works. We also have our augmentations, of which we have none except our default ones down here. Our IFF. Automatic friend or foe identification uses advanced heuristic algorithms to associate visible objects with known threat categories. Targeting rectangle highlights red over enemies, green over allies, and blue over neutrals. There's no upgrades, it's always active, and it requires no energy. Light. Bioluminescent cells within the retina provide coherent illumination of the agent's field of view. Upgrades increase the intensity of the light emitted, improving the maximum effective distance. Three upgrades. Now, this I don't believe in the original game was upgradable, uh, but they added upgrades to this to make it brighter. Infolink. One-way microtransceiver array allows agents in the field to receive messages from control and to store and later retrieve relevant maps, conversations, and notes. Inacoops file note JRI33 Violet. This is top of the line all the way, so don't expect any upgrades. Jaime Reyes. All right, that's it for augmentations. We have our skills. Which, when we start the game proper, we'll be going over this. Um, without reading everything, the use of heavy weaponry, including flamethrowers, laws, and experimental plasma and gep guns, we're not going to upgrade this at all, because we're going to go non-lethal. But basically, the more you upgrade, the more your accuracy and damage increases. Pistol. The use of handheld pistols, including the standard 10mm pistol, its stealth variant, and the mini crossbow. We will be upgrading pistol because of the mini crossbow. You can put trank darts in there. So we'll be using that. Rifle. The use of rifles, including assault rifles, sniper rifles, and shotguns. Not going to use it. Low tech. The use of melee weapons, such as batons, knives, throwing knives, swords, pepper guns, and prods. We will be upgrading this. Demolition. The use of thrown explosive devices, including lambs, gas grenades, EMP grenades, and even electronic scramble grenades. Not only does this increase with every upgrade accuracy and damage increase, but it also increases the amount of time you have to um, deactivate like an enemy one. Um, but we're not going to be worrying about that. Environmental training. Experience with using hazmat suits, ballistic armor, thermoptic camo, and rebreathers in a number of dangerous situations. Uh, bullshit. We're not using it. Lockpicking. Lockpicking is as much art as skill, but with intense study, it can be mastered by any agent with patience in a set of lockpicks. We will be upgrading that. Electronics. By studying electronics and its practical application, agents can more efficiently bypass a number of security systems using multi-tools. We will be upgrading that. Medicine. Practical knowledge of human physiology can be applied by an agent in the field, allowing more efficient use of med kits and bioelectric cells. We're not going to be using that. There's going to be robots that we can use to heal ourselves. The The point of going non-lethally is, hope, is hopefully that I'm not taking fucking damage, so we're going to leave that alone. Computer. The covert manipulation of computers and security consoles. We will be upgrading that. 
Athletics is new, um, I believe, to revision. This combined swimming, which everyone agreed was useless, into a little bit something else. So peak physical fitness can only be obtained by agents with a strict regimen of diet and exercise. Untrained is an, av is an agent of average fitness. Trained is the running speed, jump height, and swimming performance of an agent increases slightly. So they added running speed and jump height to the mix, which does make it a more useful skill. We also have our goals and notes screen. We have our conversation logs. Any images we have will be stored here. And then logs. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and keep moving. Oh, we also got shit right here. Or a nano key ring. A nano key ring can read and store the two-dimensional molecular patterns of different nano keys and then recreate those patterns on demand. So we just picked up a nano key on the desk so we can pull it out and unlock the door. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current goals and any notes you may decide to take. On a typical mission, a UNATCO agent's objectives are logged electronically so that he can stay on task at all times. Uh-huh. Now pick up a weapon and try to break open those crates. One of them's indestructible, but the others contain things you might find useful. So we can pick up a combat knife and a crowbar. The crowbar takes up two slots, but has a base damage of 12. And the description says, a crowbar. Hit someone or something with it. Repeat. Yanako Ops file note, many crowbars we call murder of crowbars. Always have one for combat. Ha, by Gunther Herman. That's also someone we'll be familiar with later, so remember that name. We have a combat knife, an ultra-high carbon stainless steel knife. Well, there we go. So let's fuck up some shit. Now pick up the lockpick and use it to open the door. Lockpicking takes time and expends the self-assembling resources of modern lockpicks. Just be patient and remember your training. At higher skill levels, you won't need as much time or lockpick resources to pick a lock. So we got two lockpicks. Metal crates we cannot destroy. Fuck that thing. We also just picked up some lockpicks. A disposable lockpick. The tension wrench is steel, but appropriate needles are formed from fast congealing polymers. Unaco Ops file note. Here's what they don't tell you. Despite the product literature, you can use a standard lockpick to bypass all but the most high-end nano locks. Alec of Jacobson. See, that's why I fucking love this game. There's lore everywhere. Doors have two strength values. The door strength tells you how much damage a door takes before being destroyed. The lock strength tells you how many lockpicks will be required to pick the lock. Some doors have an infinite strength and an infinite lock strength. That means you have to find a key. So yeah, this door has an infinite strength, so we cannot destroy it. There we go. The code to the door has been stored in that data cube. Right click on the data cube to read the contents, then type the code into the keypad. You activate the keypad with the right mouse button, just like you activate a data cube or any object in the world. We'll make this one easy for you. To open the door, use the code 0012. Got it? Hi, May. Why did I do that? Bitch! Use the disposable multi tools on the table to hack the keypad up ahead. A multi tool's resources are finite. When a tool is depleted, it becomes useless. The manual describes other uses for the multi tool. At higher skill levels, you'll need less time and multi tool resources to hack a given device. Okay. So we got three multi tools. Oh, wait. Let's read it, you know? A disposable electronics tool. By using electromagnetic resonance detection and a frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of current through a circuit, skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, autogun turrets, alarms, and other security systems. 
UNACO Training Manual, Section 3C, Multi-Tools. A multi-tool is not really a tool at all, not in the usual sense of the word, but a disposable electronic device that utilizes electromagnetic resonance detection and frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of current through almost any non-hardened security. Circuitry. Skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, autogun turrets, alarms, or other security elements. Note that multi-tools cannot be used for computer information extraction. See Section 5A Hacking. Almost done, but one quick note. I'm not exactly the expert on this sort of thing. For that, you'll have to check in with Sam Carter when you get to Liberty Island. But remember that there's any number of other ways to open a door, including using explosives or finding a security computer. Hi, mate. So... There we go. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. God damn it. Medical! Lying in front of you is a brave cadet who volunteered to be rendered unconscious for this next training exercise. Highlight and search him to find the key to the medical room. Afterward, pick up his body and place it on the medical table so that one of my aides can revive him once the exercise is over. So we got a nano key. Which I guess we can then open that. Oh, my hands are full. Pick him up, motherfucker. Good work. I'll get someone down there immediately to revive Private Winslow. Move on to the next area. Thanks, Winslow. You can bet this won't be the last time we sent you into a dark room. Turn on your light augmentation and find the exit on the other side. Just press F12 by default. Oh. Yeah. The light's a little strange. <laughs> of a machine to need repair bots now and then. If you used up some bioelectric energy getting through the dark area, for example, this contraption can charge you back up. These are our fucking boys right here. The repair bot can restore up to 75 points of bioelectric energy every 60 seconds. The repair bot is ready, you may now recharge. Congratulations, you completed phase one. Move over the ramp into the next rooms to begin learning movement skills. We'll be watching you through the cameras, like the one you can see up in the corner. In the field, remember that terrorists sometimes use cameras like this in their security grids to set off alarms and alert guards to your location. Cool. Oh yeah, this is weird. There's a box of ammo here. I don't know why. I don't know why there's a box of ammo there. You don't even have a gun here. It's weird. Jump across the platforms. You'll have to crouch to get under those pipes. If you fall, use these stairs to begin again. I never fall. I'm the fucking master of movement. <laughs> you fucking bitch! That didn't happen. Stop it! <gasps> My motherfucker! <gasps> what the hell is fucking happening right now? Sideways leap. What is going on? I'm actually like curious. There's no augmentation in that slot. What the hell is auto save? I'm going to start auto saving. Controls. What? 
Oh, keyboard mouse. You fuck. Where is it? Quick save. Numpad plus. Quick Lotus Slash. Oh, there we go. Huh! What is going on? What is going on? Yes, Quick Load, don't ask me every time. Fucking hell, dude. Jesus. I'm like trying to show off my favorite game, I'm embarrassing myself. You need to go through the door up ahead, but it's blocked. Those wooden crates are too big to jump and too heavy to lift, so use the metal crates near the wall to build steps. To pick up a crate, walk up to it so that it highlights, then click the right mouse button. To drop something you're holding, you can press the tab key by default. I believe that guy in the window is Joseph Manderley, who's our boss. We'll see him when we get to UNATCO headquarters. All right, hazmat suit. A standard hazardous material suit that protects against a full range of environmental hazards, including radiation, fire, biochemical toxins, electricity, and EMP. Hazmat suits contain an integrated bacterial oxygen scrubber that degrades over time and thus should not be reused. All right. Uh, equip? Okay. Let's go! So it does hurt. You can just see that it's absorbing 25% of damage. Uh, can I get out, please? Oh my god. Jesus fucking Christ. These medical bots, normally used for quick healing, are of particular interest to you, JC, because you need a bot's help to install new augmentations. If you took any damage during the swim, now's a good time to get patched up. Yeah, so medical bots can help us install augmentations, but we don't have any augmentation canisters. But I'm almost fucking dead. The medbot will heal up to 300 units, which are distributed evenly among your damaged body regions. There we go. Here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. See what I mean? You pick up that weird ammo back there, but you don't even... This isn't even the part of the tutorial where you play with guns. So they just take it. I don't get it. It's weird. And they've never removed it. Welcome to the combat training area. I am Gunther Herman, and I will be monitoring your progress here. We will start with weapon familiarization. Nice. first exercise will be to learn a little about aiming and targeting. Step up to the shooting range to the west. I'm here. The targets are released by using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and take a few shots with one of the pistols until it is destroyed. Notice the targeting reticle appears when you aim at a target. Guns. Enjoy this because we'll never use this again. The pistol, base damage 14, a standard 10 millimeter pistol, there we go, 10 millimeter ammo. With their combination of high stopping power and low recoil, pistols chambered for the 10 millimeter round have become the sidearms of choice from paramilitary forces around the world. If 
you hold your aim for a few seconds before firing, you will notice the reticle starts out wide and tightens as you hold. The longer you aim as a target without moving, the greater your accuracy will become. Release the second target and aim before shooting this time. Yeah, so you'll see that we don't have great accuracy with guns. Oh, it's actually... Oh, see, now it's giving us full upgrade with pistols. Now we don't even see the reticle zero, zeroing down. It's just all auto, automatically... Jesus, I can't fucking talk. Good work. Now proceed to the next area. All right. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. This is a rifle range. Here, you will learn one of the ways skill level makes a difference in your accuracy. Step up to the shooting range. The targets are released using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and destroy it with the rifle. Use the rifle scope by pressing the left bracket key to turn the scope on. That's weird. The bracket key. Jesus, takes up four slots. Base damage of 25, though. The military sniper rifle is the superior tool for the interdiction of long-range targets. When coupled with the proving, proven 30-06 uh, round, a marksman can achieve tight groupings at better than one MOA, depending on environmental conditions. Its high velocity and accuracy have made sniper rifles using the 30 out round the preferred tool of individuals requiring one shot, one kill for over 50 years. Yeah, bitch. Excellent. Now we are going to raise your skill with rifles to master level. Release the second target and destroy it. So you'll see that we have zero of this. Just completely steady aim. Good fuck. As you can see, higher skills give you better range, accuracy, and effectiveness. Proceed to the next area when you are ready. Hand in your equipment. That's right. No cheating. This is the demolitions training area. First you will learn to use the lamb as a proximity mine. Approach the bay window and you will see a lamb placed on the target board on the black and red wall. Uh-huh. Press the first button next to the window and a security bot will be released. Watch as he nears the lamb. Lambs placed on the walls are proximity triggered. This time you will place your own lamp. Take a lamp from the munitions bay and proceed to the red and black wall below. The lamb. We will want to keep as many of these as we can because there is a point in the game where we'll need them. Get as close to the wall as possible when you place the lamp. If you aren't close enough, the lamp will fall to the ground and detonate. That would suck. Base damage five fucking hundred. A multifunctional explosive with electronic priming system that can either be thrown or attached to any surface with its polyhesive backing and used as a proximity mine. Yanako Ops file note. Disarming a proximity device should only be attempted with the proper demolitions training. Trust me on this, Sam Carter. So, when we have a lamb in our hand, if we have it like this, we'll throw it. However, if we get to the wall, you'll see that he turns it around. That means you're going to place it. Huh? Oh, I put it away. Then get the hell away. Lambs do not know friend from foe. area for more demolitions training. Yay! 
You'll need a few extra lamps for the demolitions area. Here, catch. Thank you. Next, you will need to breach the doors in the hallway. Throw a lamp down to the end of the hall. Once it blows, proceed down the corridor. So we have a wooden door and two metal doors. Notice how the wooden door was destroyed and the metal and barred doors remained. Remember this for future reference. Beyond the destroyed door, you can see a damaged piece of wall. You can also breach with a lamp. Try that now. Excellent. Notice that the wall is opened. Look for other weakened walls such as this, and your lamp and other explosives will allow you to breach them. Continue through that breach and on to the next section. Nice. Got to start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. The area beyond the door is the grenade defusing facility. Here you will learn how to remove planted explosive devices. At each of the corners of this area, you will find a lamp planted on the wall. You must disarm and remove all four lamps before you can proceed to the next section of training. You will need to move up to the lamp quickly and to defuse it by right-clicking. A second right-click will remove the lamp from the wall. So he's giving us, they don't mention it, but he's giving us master um, efficiency with lamps. It won't be this easy in real life. Morning, Agent Denton. This was a simulated experience. Real lamps will not be so forgiving. You may proceed to the next area. Well, I guess he did mention it. Hand in your equipment. That's right. No cheating. Now you will learn to move quietly conceal yourself so that you will be able to avoid the confrontation altogether. Hi, Anna. The test is simple. Get to the far north door without being spotted by the guards below. If one of them sees you, he will sound an alarm and lock the door. Okay. We got tech goggles. Unaco Stealth Guidelines. Overview. Stealth is a vital component of all UNATCO operations. When implemented correctly, stealth missions result in the lowest possible ratio of agent and civilian casualties to hostile losses. Situational awareness is key. An agent should not only be familiar with the tactical opportunities offered by their immediate environment, but how those opportunities can be exploited to their advantage with the appropriate equipment. Tech goggles allow agents to operate in low-light environments such as offices or labs, where illumination might otherwise attract attention. With binoculars, an agent can survey an opponent's disposition and determine the best way to evade or eliminate their defenses. A rifle or crossbow equipped with scope and silencing modifications can be used to interdict targets from a considerable distance, significantly compromising hostile resistance. Other features of the environment can also be used by an agent to enhance their ability to operate covertly or to create useful distractions. Disabling security cameras, subverting auto guns, and reprogramming bots are all viable tactics employed by the experienced agents in the field. So we got tech goggles. They're used by many special ops forces throughout the world under a number of different brand names, but they all provide some form of portable light amplification in a disposable package. Fucking drop it. We're never going to use it, ever. So let's get crouched and do some stealth. Remember, don't let the guards see you. Use the crates for cover and crouch when you move. Okay. Let's see if I can get this done. This is actually fairly tricky. I believe there's two guards in here. Oh. Keep moving. Oh, you fucking dick. Oh no. 
I think we made it. Always remember the four basic tactics to avoid detection. Crouch behind concealment. Stay behind enemies. Move slowly to avoid making noise. And use shadows to conceal yourself. Be alert to every possibility. Slight amendment to that. Shadows, I don't think help that much. My own experience. I hope you remember this lesson, Agent. They have assigned us to be partners, and I will not stop to hold your hand and repeat myself when we are facing a real enemy. Yes, that's true. Anna is our partner, and she will chastise us for this whole fucking thing. Now for the last test. You have to find a way across the river to the exit on the other side. There's more than one way to get there, depending on your approach and the skills you want to use. It's up to you. Make use of the IFF system to identify enemies. The crosshairs will highlight red over enemies, green over allies, and white over neutrals. So now the game kind of gives us a room and gives us free reign to figure out how we want to get across the water. There are several ways. There's a crowbar there. The way I usually go is hidden behind these barrels is a data cube. Hey JC, want to cross the water? Lower the bridge. The code is 0089. It's either that or get all wet. So we're going to wait for him to pass. I don't think bots react to noise. They're just sight. <laughs> And there we go. Step up to each hologram for more info. When you're through, go out the opposite door. All right. So let's listen to some of the, some of the things we'll be coming across in this game. A deployment of UNATCO troopers is the central component of all UN peacekeeping. So that's what Yunatko troopers look like. They're our allies. The NSF, the biggest terrorist threat in the U.S. This national militia group thinks it is fighting the second American revolution. These are going to be our enemies, the NSF. This page industries walking turret, marketed to governments worldwide, is the workhorse of most national military forces. Due to the heavy armor, they take little damage from ordinary bullets. If you come up against a bot, you should use an EMP grenade, scrambler grenade, or some kind of explosive. Yeah, these guys are uh, definitely going to be a thorn in our side for, for non-lethal. An inexpensive security bot. A favorite of third world countries and corporate security divisions. Not so mobile, but don't be fooled. We've lost plenty of agents to its well-armored assault gun. Like other bots, it's difficult to damage with ordinary bullets. Alright, we got two more. There's a hologram of Anna. This is the old augmentation technology. Hopefully about to be phased out. Notice the reliance on electronics and servo mechanics. A maintenance nightmare. If I had two credits for every repair manual they made me file in my office in the med lab. So, Anna Navarra and Gunter Herman, who was the last guy we talked to, he, he guided us through the um, demolitions and, and guns training, are mechs. They are basically, um, you know, cyborgs. And uh, she is going to be our partner. They're phasing these guys out for the new version, which is me and my brother Paul, who's right here. The Coalition's new nano-augmented agents are nearly indistinguishable from the general population, except that you and your brother don't know how to smile, even for a picture. So Paul and me are the two brand new nano-agents, and I believe we're the only two right now. We're basically, you know, kind of tests, which is why we're going through this training facility. There's also an Easter egg here. If we hit that secret switch, this door opens up. 
Step over to the communicator. There's someone who wants to talk to you. Manderley likes to hear which agents find this area. They're usually the ones who take terrorists by surprise in the field. Your brother Paul, for instance. All right, carry on. Don't let it go to your head. It's gone to my head. Sufficiently impressive, an early success for the whole organization. Thanks. You from the United Nations? Your augmentations are a go. The real test comes next. Active duty. I'm ready, sir. Yes. Yes, you are. That's Bob Page. Page Industries. He is uh, working with UNACO. But uh, basically, we won't learn much about him for a while, but uh, Bob Page is important to the entire fucking series as a whole, so keep him in your mind as well. And that's it. It's done. We get no music this time, apparently. All right. That was the introduction episode, just to get things started. And uh, next time, we're going to go ahead and start the real game and get into the shit. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Hope you enjoyed it. This might have been slightly boring because it was just learning how shit works, but that's okay. That's okay. That's why I'm calling it episode zero, introduction. You don't have to watch it. That's all right. Fuck you. Just kidding. Anyway, I will see you next time. You stay safe out there. Have a good night.